For to us, a child is born, to us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. With over 2 billion Christians in every country, Christianity is currently the world's largest religion. Restaurants like in and out have Bible verses on their food items. Bibles are in hotels across America. There was even a Jesus Super Bowl ad. But around 1700 to 2000 years ago, Christians were persecuted in Rome. But there was a unique Roman emperor who broke this cycle and helped it become what it is today. But this raises the question, how did a Roman emperor popularize Christianity? Sure, many people have helped spread the gospel throughout history, from monks like Martin Luther, to evangelists like Billy Graham, Joel Osteen, and Greg Laurie. But when we look back deeper into Christian history, we see that a Roman emperor saved Christianity during its beginning. To analyze this, let's learn about Jesus, the persecutions, and finally about this mysterious emperor and the Council of Nicaea. Jesus Christ was a Jew born sometime around 6-4 BC. The name Christ is Greek for Messiah or Savior. He was born in the city of Bethlehem, but raised in Nazareth. When he was born, the Roman Empire had already taken over the province of Judea. Jesus spread many messages such as promoting peace, love, respect, and most importantly, worship of God. He preached many things like love your enemies and turn the other cheek, especially seen in the Sermon on the Mount. He performed many miracles like healing and raising people from the dead, and taught many parables like the prodigal son, and the parable of the mustard seed. Along with this, he gains a good reputation, having twelve disciples and people believed he was the son of God. But just like in any superhero movie, show, or novel, there is always a villain. Many people despised his works and preaching. The Pharisees, a group of Jewish religious leaders, plotted to kill him. This ultimately led to Judas Iscariot, among Jesus' disciples, betraying Jesus. This caused Jesus' crucifixion, occurring between 30 to 40 AD. The Romans crucified him because they felt as if he was a threat to their authority. But after three days, he was resurrected from the tomb and brought alive again. After his death, Christianity became more and more popular. Many people helped its growth, like Paul the Apostle, who spread Christ's message in the Roman Empire. But there was a problem. The Roman officials disliked Christians. In 64 AD, an event called the Great Fire of Rome occurred, where a big fire broke out. It is unclear exactly who or what caused the fire, but Nero, the emperor at the time, blamed the Christians. As a punishment, he burnt Christians alive. He crucified, threw Christians into wild animals to be eaten alive, and arrested many. Victims became known as martyrs. It is even said that the disciple Peter was killed under the rule of Nero, where he was famously crucified upside down. And Paul the Apostle, who was beheaded. Constantine reigns from 306 through 337 AD, whose conversion to Christianity changed it as we know it today, and ultimately the world. Constantine was born in Nisus, nowadays Serbia. His parents included Flavius Valerius Constantius and Helena, who was a devout Christian. His father later divorced his mother and married Flavia Maximiana Theodora and had six children together. Constantine worked at Diocletian's court, which was located in Nicomedia since his father was promoted from military leader to one of the Caesars of the Territarchy in 293 AD in the Western Roman Empire. Constantine learned Latin, Greek, and philosophy. He was surrounded by pagans and Christians. Constantine witnessed the persecution of Christians there. Since birth, he was a pagan, but this all changed in 312 AD. Constantine was preparing for battle since he was going to battle against Maxentius, a rival emperor with a good army, which worried him. According to two accounts, one by his son's tutor, 
Lactantius, and another by Bishop Eusebius of Caesarea, the day before the battle, he and his army saw a vision of a cross in heaven, and they heard Jesus saying in Greek, In this sign, conquer. After this, Constantine ordered that all of the soldier's seals be marked with the Christian symbol, and that it be marked with the symbol called Shiro, which translates to Christ in English. He ended up winning the Battle of the Milvian Bridge in 312 AD. Constantine vowed to worship the god who gave him the sign. Unsure which one, though. Many bishops who traveled with him, including Maternus from Cologne, Rectitius from Auden, Marinus from Arles, and Osius from Cordoba, explained he seen Jesus. So he devoted his life to God. In 313 AD, he and another emperor named Licinius issued the Edict of Milan, meaning they legalized Christianity. This was very game-changing because, originally, Christians weren't allowed to worship. Before, they even had to find very secret meet-up locations, such as underground tunnels called catacombs. But because of Constantine, Christians worried about persecution no more. His victory caused his conversion, and he started building churches everywhere, pouring in a lot of money. He built churches like the Church of St. Peter, the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem, and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem and he built churches in Constantinople. He gave credit to God for his success, and even was baptized on his deathbed. He even formed the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, where 300 bishops were gathered to try to work out the controversy of who Jesus truly was. They even tried to figure out when Christian holidays should be held, including Easter. They had to settle many arguments, including, Who is the Christ? Is he more human than divine or more divine than human? Was Jesus created or begotten? Being the Son of God, is he co-equal and co-eternal with the Father? Or is he in lower status than the Father? Is the Father the one true God? Or are the Father, Son, and Spirit the true God? Many people had their own opinions and interpretations, but Constantine told them to make a decision by majority rule. Let's take a look at two people involved within the council. Arius was a Christian priest who believed that Jesus was created by God and is lesser than God. He didn't believe in the Trinity, becoming known as Arianism. Though Arianism doesn't exist anymore, Jehovah's Witnesses share very similar beliefs with it. Before the council, Arius fled from Egypt to Nicomedia, because in Egypt, bishops condemned his beliefs. In Nicomedia, he spread his teachings, wrote letters about them, and they were sent worldwide. He gained a huge reputation through his work. Arians in the council, though, were banished from the church for their heresy. Athanasius was a Christian deacon who opposed Arius' ideas. He believed that Jesus is in fact equal to the Father and that the Trinity is real. Before the council, he also had a huge reputation. He wrote two apologetical books called Against the Gentiles and On the Incarnation of the Word. In the Council of Nicaea, he was the head leader of his belief system and welcomed the definition of the Son formulated as consubstantial with the Father. In the council, he had many followers, basically outnumbering the Arians. Within the council, they argued about how to create the Nicene Creed. Arians wanted to try to use scripture to fit their own views, but Athanasius' team wanted to strictly use scripture to come up with a creed. Athanasius' team created a term that Arians couldn't use to fit their belief systems, and to establish that God and Jesus are of the same substance, which is homoousius. Homo meaning same, and ousius meaning substance or being. These two roots combined means of the same substance, nature, or essence. They came up with the Nicene Creed, which holds the core belief systems of Christianity, which at the end was based around Athanasius' theology. This creed was spread everywhere by Constantine, throughout the churches, and is still recited in churches to this day. Athanasius was described by St. Gregory of Nazianzen as the true pillar of the church, whose life and conduct were the rule of bishops, and his doctrine the rule of the Orthodox faith. It is important to note that the council didn't create the doctrine of the deity of Jesus, but rather solidified the teaching of who the apostles said he was. Constantine's efforts to support Christianity really helped. He legalized Christianity, enabling it to spread to many other people, rather than just a small group of people. If he didn't legalize it, it would either be a lot less popular than it is now, or even would have simply died off. He formed a council which helped since Christians were finally able to agree with something and not argue, which could have had a negative impact on Christianity. Although Constantine is very controversial, whatever his intentions were, we can all agree that without him, Christianity wouldn't be the same, and the world would be very different. I hope you enjoyed this documentary. Feel free to ask any questions if you have any.